module 14 relationship between confidence intervals and statistical significance section 2 testing for equivalence and non inferiority in many cases the goal is not to test the statistical significance but to test whether a new treatment or a drug is equivalent to or not inferior to that of the standard treatment so the treatment is already available so we are if you are marketing a new drug you know for example a novel generic cancer drug that is far cheaper than the one existing drug which is very expensive in this case all you have to do that is the drug is performing as good as this standard drug so if this novel drug is found to be as good as the standard drug then that result itself is interesting and useful to many people standard statistical hypothesis testing via p values or confidence interval does not inform us the equivalence so there is no point in testing the equivalence of a new treatment with a standard treatment unless you are sure positively sure that the standard treatment is effective so if the standard treatment itself is not effective then there is no point in saying that you know the new treatment is equivalent to or not inferior to the standard treatment so please don't make that error so you have first you have to be very clear, careful and clear that the the standard treatment works evidence based research is already substantiating the effect efficacy of that drug then you can make an inference about uh, equivalence or non inferiority of the, the the next drug candidate when testing for the new drug uh, united states fda that is uh, you know uh, uh, food and drug administration defines two drug formulations to be bio equivalent when the ratio of their peak concentration in the blood plasma and the entire 90 percentage confidence interval of that ratio is between 0.8 and 1.25 so the the ratio has to be between 0.8 and 1.25 so both right ratio of their peak concentrations in blood plasma and the entire 90 percentage ci so has to be within this range so if you can see in this box you can see the 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 bottom there is a small box in it so that is the equivalence zone so the 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 proportions have to be in it and as well as the entire 95 percentage 90 percentage confidence interval remember this is 90 percentage the you know the federal drug administration's uh, policy there is not 95 percentage but it's just 90 percentage so of course that rule is context based and context dependent you know the the range is for equivalency is a scientific question not a statistical question so it depends on the context you can change you can decide uh, you know that the the equivalency uh, pertinent to your experiment if you can adequately justify your stance in it the range is also symmetrical ratio of the peak plasma concentration of the standard drug divided by the new drug or the ratio of the new drug divided by the standard drug so that is why it is basically uh, you know fluctuating between uh, uh, you know uh, as you can see it here 125 percentage the reciprocal is 80 percentage and the 80 percentage reciprocal is 125 percentage so this is uh, uh, you know perfectly complementing each other so that is why it is symmetric distribution drug formulations to be bioequivalent there is the same statement of the fda as i told you it has to be 0.8 and 1.25 and the entire range has to be in between this right so now the question is that in this diagram which are the drugs that actually uh, uh, you know equivalent to the standard drug so we have got three drug candidates a b and c so which among these drugs do have Uh, you know uh, uh, have equivalence or bioequivalency as per the fda's guideline so as you can see here only b and c has not a because that a's proportion that is actually the dot you can see the proportion basically is the the division right the divided the value the value is basically the, the ratio of the uh, you know standard drug versus new drug or new drug versus standards vice versa right is well within that range but its 90 percentage confidence interval is way too stretched 
it's out of that range so it is not bioequivalent but b and c the range is entirely within the 95 90 percentage confidence interval so now coming to another set of drugs you know e f and g d e and f yes d e and f so which one do you think is bioequivalent well none is bioequivalent because none of them have got their confidence level that is uh, confidence interval 90 percentage confidence intervals none of them have completely within that range of or equivalency box another valid conclusion is that the f the last one the range is entirely out of that box so you can clearly say that it is non-equivalent while all other cases is part partially equivalent or ambiguous situation you cannot make any valid conclusion but in the case of the last one that is f you can clearly say that it is non-equivalent to the standard drug so how are the p-values you know it is not really useful in this case the p-values is you know the, the usual approach through the statistical hypothesis testing for example students t-test makes actually no sense at all in this sort of situations in t-test the null hypothesis is all drugs have same plasma level or the ratio equals to 100 percentage you know so you can see that it has been uh, uh, said by the null hypothesis is you know that the dotted line or 100 percentage line so in this case of course you know uh, the confidence interval do include if the confidence that 90 percentage confidence in, uh, level includes that null hypothesis that means statistically non-significant if it doesn't include then it is significant so in this diagram you can see that drug c is significant as well as drug uh, uh, e and f but in reality that is not at all the case so that kind of statistical hypothesis testing is not good here but there is a workaround so instead of going for the normal t test you can go for uh, you know uh, two time two types of one tail t test so while the t test as done previously is erroneous a valid workaround involved two one tail t tests drugs are equivalent if and only if the following conditions are true two alternative hypotheses are one the mean value of that ratio is greater than 0.8 two the mean value of the ratio is lesser than 1.25 if both one tail p values uh, return the p value lesser than the threshold p value then we can clearly conclude that the drugs are equivalent so that is actually between these two limits that is exactly is what is shown in this diagram so you now if two vertical lines at 80 percentage and 125 percentage represent the null hypothesis so that is what the null hypothesis is so from the null hypothesis stretching on to the both the directions so that is what these two one tail t test can do it so another term is non inferiority so equivalence versus non inferiority are these synonymous no so equivalent trials attempt to prove that the new treatment or the drug works about the same as the standard treatment that is equivalence means while non inferiority means prove that the, the new treatment is not worse than the standard treatment so if you compare equivalence versus non-inferiority equivalence is a, a degree higher then comes non-inferiority you know uh, these terms are especially relevant if you are marketing the generic drugs uh, where the treatments are already available which are very expensive for the common people can afford to so non-inferiority trials are different from the equivalence trial so to prove the equivalence the entire ci range should be inside the equivalency zone you know all drugs on the right you know do not meet that isn't it so all are actually outside uh, the entire ci range is outside that uh, you know the rectangular box of equivalency zone in uh, on the other hand for non inferiority trials to prove non inferiority the entire ci must be to the right of the left border of the equivalence zone so equivalence rectangles left border 
So the entire CI confidence interval has to be the right side of that left border. So in that definition, yes, all the three drug candidates can be stated as non-inferior to the standard drug. So in summary, equivalent trials attempt to prove that the new treatment or the drug works about the same way as the standard treatment. While non-inferiority trials attempt to prove that the new treatment is not worse than the standard treatment. Standard statistical hypothesis testing via p-values or the confidence interval does not inform us equivalency. While the standard two-tailed t-test is erroneous, a valid workaround involves two one-tailed t-tests. Most importantly, there is no point in testing for equivalence of a new treatment with a standard treatment or even non-inferiority unless you are pretty sure that the standard treatment is effective. So you have to be confirmed, you have to confirm the efficacy of the standard treatment first before uh, uh, you know, uh, taking the non-inferiority or equivalence uh, tests. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening.